Welcome to day two of Bahamas with Bob. We're at the Island House Invitational Triathlon. We're sponsored by Island House Cervelo. Gatorade Endurance, our official charity partner, is more than sport. And you can check us out on babbittville.com and on Babbittville Radio. My next guest, Hella Fredrickson. We're talking 2012 Olympian, seven-time Ironman 70.3 champion, and in 2014, went 355.50. I think it's still the fastest time ever for a 70.3 race. How are you doing, Ella? I'm good, thank you. Thanks for having me. More importantly, it's so nice to have you back. I know this last year and a half has been really, really tough for you. Tell us a little bit what, what happened. Your, your knee, you just had knee injuries. This last took you for a while to recover from this. Yeah, like I was uh, coming off an incredibly strong oh. 2014, as you know, with the, my yeah. last victory in Bahrain. I won high V triathlon as well. Yes, that year. Wow, that was you won a lot of money yeah. that year. <laughs> had a good year, yeah. Yes. And I had a f uh, three good races in in 15 as well, with third in in Challenge Dubai, and then yes. two uh, victories, Ironman 70.3 South American yes. Championship, and then Ironman 70.3 Texas win. And then I just flew and saw a, a therapist that the kind of um, to, to be, I was dealing with some niggles that I wanted to kind of, you know, you want to see if you can gain those last percenters. Sure. And uh, I ran to saw, uh, I'll call him a, a specialist that a lot of people have seen. And uh, he just gave me some maintenance exercises that was not good for me. And um, very quickly, I, I started to get knee pain. And it just spiraled from there to be multiple different knee injuries yes. which went into a leg injury and a foot injury and Ugh. it was just yeah it's just it's really hard it's been a very dark has it been tough i mean because you haven't raced in a year and a half so i raced my i raced again new york triathlon in the end of july this year yeah uh, where i was uh, nowhere pain-free or fit um, but I raced it and it was fine. I was second and it was, uh, it was fine. Just to see where you were at. Yeah, yeah. And then I raced Challenge Samarin, the race that's going to be uh, the championship for yes. Challenge next year. I went over and raced that. Still not <laughs> fit and all pain-free, but much better again. Yes. I won that race. Then it started to get better and I started to kind of figure out, you know, what to do, well, where we were and, yeah. and, you know, how I would kind of recover every single day um, from the different training I was doing. Yes. And then I did uh, a month ago, 70.3 Augusta. I won that too. See, there you and go. And then it was starting to kind of like, I was not, the foot injury was getting better and better and I was starting to put in some work. And I'd say since Augusta or before Augusta, I've had my most consistent block for a long time. So it just makes me very happy and very grateful for, you know, living it through and, and keep fighting because it's been tough. <laughs> I bet it's been tough. It, it, does it make you appreciate it more, you think, when you're dealing with days where you can't do what you love to do? You can't run, you can't ride, you can't do the things you love to do. Definitely. Like, I am happy every day I go out and train. Like, there is no bad weather, no nothing <laughs> that's bad. Like, I'm just grateful and appreciative. Yeah. It, it sounds very cliche, but it is No, true. it's true. It is, uh, you know, when you really, really, really struggle, then you really realize why it is that you're in the sport. And, and uh, you know, if you know your why, as I've said many times, then you will keep doing it if it's strong enough, that why. Yes. Right? And so you have to have that why. Yeah. So when you come here, and for a lot of folks, this is sort of the end of the season. They've done Ironman. They've done Ironman 70.3 Worlds. They were gearing up for other, other races, and they're coming here sort of a party. And you're here, you're here to race. Oh, definitely. Yeah, I'm super motivated. Yeah. Like, I've trained well for this one. Yeah. And, uh, so, yeah, I'm excited to give it a go. And I'm, I'm definitely the strongest version I've been since I've been injured. So, uh, so that's great. And I keep getting stronger every day. So that's just really exciting also for this year and this race and for next year. So how hard is it? Because uh, um, Ben is working with you know, the other elite athletes every day and, you know, constantly, you know, I'm working on this guy's bike or that girl's bike. And yeah, so he's intimately involved in the sport yeah. and you can't race, you can't train. You can, you're like going, don't talk about that stuff. I can't do any of it. No, like I'm, I'm so proud of what he's done with ceramic speed in US. So I really just follow his career and I'm, I'm impressed what he's been able to, you know, yes. build up. And also in the period that I have been, you know, injured and, and, and things were not going well in my career. It was just so great that it was going well in his career. So I know I've, I've kept following the sport and I, I don't mind, you know, him helping out everyone else out yes. there. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fan of, of the sport and I love to watch and see the other girls and guys race well, you know, and yeah. I can only learn from that and then just, you know, think about how I can beat them. 
So when you look back at your career, you know, being an Olympian in 2012, talk about that experience, just, just going to the, 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 it's the biggest stage in, in the sport. Yeah, that was a childhood dream, like for sure. Like I was a swimmer back in my teenage yes. years and wanted to be an Olympian there as well. But, but I stopped racing uh, before um, I could make it. Like uh -huh. I, I stopped doing swimming. Um, I wanted to do the Sydney Olympics, but um, I stopped in 99, so I didn't qualify and all that stuff. Anyway, when I started triathlon, I wanted to become an Olympian. I wanted to make the Olympics and I did in 12. And yeah, it, it is, it is a, it's a great, great experience. And it's an experience that I've always take with me and you know I it's very it makes me very proud yeah that I have represented my country at the biggest stay in the yeah in the world like what I love about that you were in London which was probably one of the best triathlon venues ever right with the crowds were huge and you walk down I mean, did it get emotional walking down to the the swim start and just having hundreds of thousands of people cheering and millions watching on television yeah that was wild like especially the run like Crowds it was so loud, right? Thick. You could not hear you, so you can hear nothing. You couldn't even hear your footsteps. Like it was wild. It That's was such a great experience. Yeah, it is amazing. Yeah, it was. So now that you're healthy again, um, it, you're racing here. Are you? It's one of those things where you're going. I don't need an off season. I need to find some races in January and February and March <laughs> because now I'm finally healthy. Exactly. Like I don't really want an off season, but you also want to be, you know, you want to be clever about how you prioritize your racing. And yeah, I want to be fit and healthy and and strong and fast and in winning shape for the for the main races next year, which is the championship races. So if I burn myself out this winter where everybody is kind of doing their base work, it's not very smart for next year. Yes. So no, I have to follow the normal season plan and kind of like I will race maybe one more race after this one, but it will all be like base work and chilled and you know build up a fundament again yes i can't just keep you know getting fitter and fitter and fitter every day it doesn't no. make sense for for 70.3 worlds next year for right. instance you know so will that be the goal 70.3 worlds chattanooga yeah. yeah chattanooga will be the goal i'll do the european championship as well it's a big goal and the challenge championship as well so i will kind of target the championships yeah yeah and now are there people here that you haven't raced before because you've got that mix of itu olympic uh um, 70.3 and full ironman folks so I was ITU, right, for yes. uh, from 6 yes. till 13. Yes, so you've raced so pretty much. So I've raced them all, I think. Yes. I have raced them all. I think the only one I Holly? haven't raced, Holly, yeah. yeah. Because Holly kind of wasn't really. She was sort of ITU, but still dabbling. And yeah. yeah, yeah. And then she's kind of, kind of got through when I've been injured. Right. You know, the yes. last one and a half year. So I've never, that's the only girl I haven't raced. I raced the rest of them. How fun is that going to be? Yeah, that's, it's great. It's, it's fun. And, and then you I love think this form. Like, so it's sort of different yeah, with the little I, time trial and all the you rest. Know, you know, I love the Olympic distant non-draft a lot. Yes. Like one high V. Um, I yes. love that kind of two hours uh, in, in absolute max. Yes. Um, and then I think what's great about it this year is that they have made a non-draft. So we can't really... It might be the ITU athletes distance. But it's non-draft. But it's non-draft. So they just put that extra little spice into it yeah. so we don't know you know we don't know who's gonna be the best uh, so that's so exciting i know no one knows no, what's that's what's fun happen. about it right and and so many has said like what do you think really who i don't know and who's done a stage race <laughs> no i mean except for the people who were here last <laughs> exactly. year i mean the stage race is a totally yeah. different concept yeah so do you see yourself for the, especially for this next year or so staying you know 70.3 and some of the olympic non-drafting and not moving up to the full ironman distance um, we are considering one in okay. the end of the year, Okay. an Ironman. But not spending a year trying to get to Kona. You would look at an Ironman. So then you will do, I'll do a late one. So that will be either Arizona or Cozumel or okay. something like that. Perfect. And then, you know, if you do well in some 70.3, you might even almost have qualified if you do very well. That's you know, true. Like if you, you win Ironman 70.3, right? Yeah, <laughs> I know. Yeah, everything is possible. Well, of course. It definitely is. So we'll see. Like, I... Uh, I'm not, right now I'm just so hungry to get back racing my distance, which I feel is 70 point Yes. Um, and when I kind of feel I have accomplished what I think I can on that distance, I want to move up. Oh, I don't know if it's called move up or move down. Anyway, to the full distance. <laughs> yes. I don't know what it is. But well, it's nowadays, with, with like 100 Ironman 70.3s, not including all the challenge races that are out there, you can pretty much avoid doing the full distance if you want. You can, and I think that there are 70.3 specialists now. Yes. 
it's not it's just it's not just Ironman people that's doing 70.3 to prepare for an Ironman or ITU people right. just want an off-season race. No, there's a specialist that's just doing that distance and it's fast. Love it. It's very fast too. And I love that. You can still race it. It's under four hours if you do if you the have cool, a good course. Yeah. The cool thing is we're here talking about racing and not talking about injury, right? We're talking about someone who's actually gonna be incredibly competitive all weekend long and, and is not dealing with well, the therapy I got to go to tomorrow. I know. It's nice. It's so good to have you back. Thank you. Hella has been our guest. Again, we're brought to you by Island House, Cervello, Gatorade Endurance, our official charity partner, More Than Sport. We're also airing on Babbittville.com and Babbittville Radio. This is Bahamas with Bob. Hold on, everyone. We will be right back.